to bring the lost to Jesus for membership in his family, to develop them into Christ-like maturity, to equip them for Christ's ministry on earth, to improve their quality of life, to be a ministry to the total man. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Again, it is with the joy of Jesus that I come bringing you a simple message, but one that's true in these times in which we live. It's simply true that Jesus is the answer for you. He is that. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. We've been talking about something that has been hitting and affecting all of our lives. And that is old man trouble. And certainly trouble is a way of life. Job said that trouble is just as sure to touch you as the sparks fly upward. He also says simply this, man that is born of a woman is but a few days. Care how long you've been on this earth. In your mind, it's just a few days care how old you are, in your mind, it's just a few days. So he says, a few days, but all those days you are full of trouble. Trouble will not bypass any of us. And even a believer suffers trouble. So I want to talk to you again about trouble. Trouble being God's tool to perfect the life of a believer. Come on, follow me into the sanctuary and we're going to finish talking about old man trouble. Now that's, that takes me into the text. Yeah, in our text we got a good man by the name of Job. Can I tell y'all something about old man trouble? Mm, there's something that trouble does for us and I want to try to bring it out if y'all pray for me. First of all, trouble in your life will come to replace what you got. God will send trouble tippy into your life for a replacement. Now watch this. When trouble came into Job's life, the first thing that happened, now remember, he didn't do nothing wrong. He hadn't sinned against God, but God, but God was trying to prove something to the devil that Job truly loved him. So the first thing God allowed the devil to do was to come through a great wind and wipe out all of Job's children. All seven boys and three daughters. Oh, that's terrible. That's hard. But you got to understand something. In this life, don't nothing belong to you. You don't have nothing. Everything that you have, God gives you. And I feel for ladies, I understand you women, why you can love so hard. Because you're next door to death when you bring in new life. You go through pain. You become symbolic of Jesus. You shed your blood in order to bring in new life. But sometimes God will separate you from your children. I remember my wife sitting at the table, brought tears to my eyes, but I couldn't do nothing about it. Had a granddaughter, wanted to rear up against me. I couldn't deal with no child coming at me. No, 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 no. But that meant this, even though she loves them children, God has to send trouble into our families and with our children in order to get them grandchildren and children to realize that he is God. Because when you do all that you can do, and when you've given it all that you can give it, that's when God will send trouble. That's why you got to be careful how you pray for that old wayward husband. Be careful how you pray for that unfaithful husband. Because when you start praying for God to change him, God has a way of sending trouble. He can send a stroke that will paralyze him. And you'll have to take care of him the rest of 
your life. Them children that are breaking your heart, y'all don't hear me. God has a way of coming in and taking a disobedient child. Because a disobedient child is not going to live half his days. But you got to understand that God will send trouble. Knock that child to his knees. Don't you go into pain because God might put him in jail. Because he knows what you then put in that child. And that is a rebellious child. But God will send trouble to break him down. And when he breaks her down or breaks him down, that child will have to throw up their hands and say, Lord, forgive me. Because I know mama didn't live like this. I know daddy didn't live like this. But you got to understand, he will wipe that child out in order to replace it with something better. Took Job's kids, wiped them out. Then he turned around and sent the Sibians. Are you all with me? The Sibians came and robbed Job's servants and stole all of his oxen and didn't stop there because the Chaldeans came along. And when the Chaldeans came along, the servants were out there watching his camels and they turned around and killed all the servants and stole all his camels. What am I trying to say? God will take something from you. But when he takes it, he can replace it. And I'm here to tell you, when he replaces it, he'll replace it with something better. Can I talk to you today? When you look at Job chapter 42 and verse 12, it says, so God blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning." So what am I trying to say when God is getting ready to replace? You may not understand it. He may want to replace that no good man in your life. And you laying up can't sleep. And God is sending all kind of trouble. Y'all done got quiet in me. <laughs> sending all kind of pain in your life. Because you dealing with somebody that don't really love you no how. Somebody that's abusing you anyhow. And God is already trying to show you through trouble that I want to come in and replace it. And he turns around and leaves you for crazy Sally. And you sit up and can't sleep, can't rest. When you know you've been treating him good, been giving him everything, you better learn and fall back and say, Lord, not in my will but thine be done because God is giving you some trouble because he's trying to give you something better. This may have something better waiting on you right around the corner. Yeah, and you sitting up crying over that job you lost. The Bible said Job's second state was better than his first. You crying over that job and the boss been mistreating you and have been treating you wrong and you sitting up crying because you can't see tomorrow. You better learn how to cast all your cares upon him because he's sitting in trouble to try to make you move because he got something better for you. Will y'all help me preach? in here say all trouble ain't coming to hurt you some trouble if God sending is coming to bless you y'all ought to praise God in here oh yeah thank you Holy Ghost just had a revelation all things all things work together for the good it's trouble you worry but one thing that you can control is that you love God. How many of y'all love God? Now with the other hand, how many of y'all got some trouble? Well, I want you to know if you love God and you got some trouble, if you love God with the right hand, trouble over here, if you love God in the middle, in the middle, in the middle, he's doing something for you. He's working it. He's working it. He's working it for your good. Y'all don't hear me. So I ain't going to have no pity party. He's working it for my good because I know one thing. I love the Lord. I might have lost the job. Johnny might have walked out on me. My bills ain't paid right now, but I intend to pay them. I'm just having some trouble, but I know it's working out for my good because I know God is going to replace it with something better. 
trouble comes to make you move so God can replace it with something better. Number two, God refines us. He refines us. God had to refine Nebuchadnezzar. Old King Nebuchadnezzar was the greatest king that ever lived. And Nebuchadnezzar one day was looking at his kingdom. And the Bible said that Nebuchadnezzar was sitting on his throne. And while Nebuchadnezzar was sitting on his throne, Nebuchadnezzar began to brag about all of his accomplishments. Look at what I have gotten. Look at what I have built. I have grabbed. And follow me over now to Daniel. I'm leading you to Daniel. The fourth chapter in verse 31. The Bible said he began to brag. And he was boasting about what all of that he had. And the Bible says this. While the words was in the king's mouth. Good God Almighty. While the man was bragging about his accomplishments. There was a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. Nebuchadnezzar, I ain't talking to none of your servants. I'm talking to you. The kingdom is departed from thee. For seven seasons, Nebuchadnezzar was driven out into the fields. He was literally driven out into the fields. His understanding was gone. He literally had a, a nervous breakdown. And when he had the nervous breakdown, the Bible says that Nebuchadnezzar hair grew out on him like a wild animal. But you got to understand, he lost his mind, but it was a refining process. Now, what am I talking about? A refining process. When they refine gold, or when they refined metal, they put heat on it. And that heat is so hot until it will melt it into a liquid. And when it becomes a liquid, they can go in and get all the impurities out of it. Sometimes God will refine us because we become like a Nebuchadnezzar. We get to thinking about, look what we have done. I believe the United States of America right now is being refined. With all of the greatness that we've had, with all of the power of this nation, God is putting us through a refining process. And through this refining process, we're learning that we ain't no better than nobody else. I want you to know, I want you to know something. Even though God has saved you, he might have sanctified your life, but he's got a way of putting you through a refiner's fire. He'll put heat on you to make you throw up your hands and say, Lord, I know I'm nothing. Lord, I know I'm nothing. Lord, I couldn't have come this far without you. I heard Paul. Papa singing, Papa said, grace and mercy have brought me through. Yes, you didn't bless my home. Yes, you didn't bless my children. Yes, you didn't bless my life. But it ain't nothing that I've done. It's the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous in my eyes. And Lord, I can't get so important. I can't get so big till I don't have time to say thank you, Jesus. How many of you know God has blessed you? I don't want God to have to refine me to make me say thank you. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him when I'm sick in my body. I'm going to praise him when I'm hurting. I'm going to praise him when I'm disappointed because I know that God didn't do this for me. He didn't do it for you. You don't deserve his blessings. If you know it's the truth, come on and help me praise him in here today. The Bible said, for seven seasons. That man, even though he was the king of the greatest empire of that day, God knocked him to his knees, crawling around like an animal. And when you get to the fourth chapter in verse 34, listen to his testimony. 
The Bible says, and at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes unto heaven, and my understanding returned unto me. And I blessed the Most High. And I praised and honored him that lived forever, whose dominion is everlasting dominion. And his kingdom is from generation to generation. He refined him. And then when you get to verse 36, it says, at the time my reason returned. Are y'all still with me? He said, at the time my reason returned unto me, and for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and my brightness returned unto me. And my counselors and my lords sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom. And excellent majesty was returned unto me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, Praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, all whose work are truth, and his ways judgment. And those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. Sometimes trouble comes in order to refine you. And as it refines you, it will perfect you. And as it perfects you, it will humble you. Can I preach to you just a little bit? Y'all not bored with me, are you? The Holy Ghost just brought to my mind Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus in the book of Hebrews, chapter 5 and verse number 8, it says, even though he were a son, God literally had to refine Jesus. So that doesn't mean that you're not saved because God is refining you. Jesus, the Bible says, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience. Get that. He learned obedience through the things which he suffered. What are you talking about, Hebrews? When Jesus went into the garden of Gethsemane, It was there in the garden of Gethsemane that Jesus, the humanity and the man rose up and he began to realize what he was called to the earth to do. But when he seen what he had to go through, he had a change of mind. He looked into the cup of his suffering and when he looked into the cup of his suffering, he could see through his prophetic eye that he would be criticized, that he would be beaten with a cat of nine tails. He could see the blood coming out of his body. He could see them piercing in his side. He could see the pain that he would go through. And I, we hear him cry out, the Bible says, my God, my God, why have thou, oh y'all don't hear me, oh forsaken me. But as he looked again, he said, Father, not my will. I don't want it. I don't want it. But not my will, but thine be done. And he didn't go one time. He, he didn't go two times, but he had to go back a third time. And that makes me think about me. It makes me think about some of you because there are things that come into our life that we as believers don't want to have to put up with. We don't want to put up with some of these folks in the church. We, we don't want to have to put up with the folks lying on us because we're saved and because you're doing all you know how. Your family will lie on you. Friends will lie on you. And you know how how to straighten them out but you'll have to turn around and say I got a home of peace it's not my will but thine be done otherwise God has a way of letting them come on you in order to humble you to get you to hold your peace so that you can stand back and let the Lord fight your battle and I'm here today he will refine you but when he refines you he'll bring you out as pure gold because as he refines you he makes you better y'all don't hear me while you're going through you're getting better while you're going through your faith is increasing while you're going through your faith is increasing your patience is developing just tell somebody I got some trouble but I ain't gonna have no pity party 
because God is just working on me. He's just working on me. I hear that Bible talking to my mind. Every time I want to get mad and get vexed with God, I hear him talk to my mind. When your ways please me. Sometimes uh, Wells rises up and Wells wants to get too big. But God has a way of sending trouble. He'll send trouble so and I'll bring tears to your eyes. But he's got a way of humbling you and bringing you back down. But I know I'm not big enough. My arms are too short. I can't fight with God. So instead of having a pity party, I'm going to have a praise party. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm going to have a praise party. I'm in trouble, but I'm going to have a praise party. And I hear David talking to my mind. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I'm just praising the Lord because I know that he's refining my life. Y'all heard this, but I got to say it to you just one more time. If you've been through what I've been, what I've been through, you'd be praising too. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, if you've been going through some trouble, you'd be praising too. Because it ain't your goodness, it's God's grace that's with me. Even in my time of trial, even in my time, oh, thank you, Jesus. As I get ready to close, trouble does a third thing. Trouble revives us. <laughs> yes, it does. It revives us. Now notice Job was sick unto death. But when you get to the 42nd chapter and verse number 10, the Bible said the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friend. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. And then he turned around and gave him new life. Allowed the man to live till he was 140 years old. Said he turned around and the man was able to see his children, his grandchildren, son's children. Otherwise, he revived him. He gave him new life. Sometime trouble will kill you almost, but you ain't dead because God will revive you. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. I pray that today's message was a message of encouragement a message of life, a message of hope. Don't you dare wallow in your disappointment or in a hopelessness. That's why you serve God. He's able to reach in and make something out of nothing. The beauty is grace and mercy. Grace and mercy. That grace is you might have made mistakes might have made errors, but grace is there because you didn't know any better. That's grace. But then there is mercy. Looks a whole lot like grace, but a little different. Because brother mercy is when you know better and you still have done wrong. And God doesn't destroy you. He's having mercy on you. Think of an old song that we sing sometimes, and they sing it quite often even now. Your grace and mercy has brought me through. I'm living this moment because of you. I want to thank you and praise you too for your grace and mercy has brought me through. God wants to bring you out so that you'll have a testimony, the same testimony that David had. This is the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous 
in my eyes. Trouble's coming to you. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter what status in life you even have. Trouble is coming to you. But God will allow it to happen, just like he did with Job. But you'll notice in the closing chapter of Job that his second state was better than his first. He was perfected. He used trouble to perfect Job and make him a better man. So you let your trouble be a stepping stone, not a stumbling block. We hold these prayer requests in our hands and we want to pray for those of you, especially for Joy and uh, Shannara, I hope I pronounced that right, Shannara from pa Palmetto, Florida. Uh, she has cancer, daughter in jail, mother on drugs. I know that's trouble, but God is able to step in there. Don't you dare give up hope. And then Ruby from Fayette, Mississippi, behind in the house in car payments and uh, wants the family to be a little closer. Marie from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Son is suicidal, praying for your daughter. Vanessa from Homa, Louisiana. We want prayer for James who is 20 years old and on drugs, been on them for five months, praying for you. And Deborah from Connersville, North Carolina. I want to pray for the home life, and spiritual life, and your finances. I tell you, when that spiritual life gets better, everything else will fall in line. No wonder the Bible says, First seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. God wants to empower your life, but he is your hope even in the midst of hopelessness. Father, we commend these prayer requests to you. We submit them to you. Your people are troubled, they're burdened, and some, Lord, are at on their last leg. But you're the God of hope. You said you would never leave us, nor would you forsake us. We believe your divine word, because by two immutable things we know you can not lie to us. So Lord, we commend these to your hands, these prayers, asking that you will step in and give them miracles of deliverance. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. And as I close, I want to simply say this to you, that when God answers them prayers, and he will, we want you to call us. Please do that. I need to hear from you. I want to know that God has stepped in, that this ministry has touched you, touched you. I need to hear from you. Call us. Let us know that. And then if we blessed you in any way, we would love for you to bless us with your love gifts. Pray over it. Let God lead you as to what you should give, what you should do. We want to keep coming to you and to your homes, giving you this simple gospel, but it is an empowering gospel if you will apply it to your life. May God bless you and heaven smile upon you and we're looking to see you again next week. Count on Malone Media Productions for all your professional video needs. Services include sports filming and editing, professional documentaries and presentations promotional videos and infomercials, job fair and recruitment videos, video consultation and training, portrait videos for all your precious moments, church and business commercials, as well as four camera wedding and event filming. Contact Cottrell Malone of Malone Media Productions for a free promotional DVD and quote.